Yeah, this up to They'll thousand. They'll join ma. It can okay. it can okay. take up to thousand. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So let's start with the second session of our webinar. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone is safe and healthy. Today, on behalf of Indian Academy of Oral Medicine and Radiology, we bring you with an enlightening lecture by amazingly talented speaker, Dr. Tatu Joy, who had done tremendous work in TMD and CBCT. Though he chose to talk on TMD today, as he has an exclusive practice in TMD. I hope you will all be benefited by this talk. Uh, this, the session that we are having today is on TMD dysfunction and the importance of an OMR specialist. Let me give you a little in short about Dr. Tatu Joy. He is, um, he is actually done his BDS in 1994 from Cods Mangalore, MDS in 1999. SDM Dharwad. Presently, he is working as professor and head SMIDS, Puleshkaram, Tamil Nadu. Director, he's director and is working with facial diagnostic. He's a director and a consultant. It's an exclusive head and neck diagnostic center in Kochi. He's also director of Dr. Tattoo's TMJ Head and Neck Pain Care. He has a number of scientific presentations. He has has gone present. He has an exclusive neuromuscular dentistry clinic in the country, and at present, he has actually worked uh, a lot on neuromuscular dentistry. So I hand over the screen now to Dr. Tatu. Him continue with his session. Thank you, Dr. Tatu. Thank you, Dr. Shalu. That is a big introduction for a small person. But anyway, I accept it uh, uh, no, with all uh, modesty. Thank you for that introduction. Can we have all the other mics uh, on mute, if you don't mind? Dr. Palomi uh, is my co-host and Dr. Deepankar is also there. So if you could mute all the other mics. Yeah, thank you. So let me start uh, without, because I have limited time. I have a maximum of one hour. So, not that the app will work after that also, but I wanted to give some time for question and answers. So, my uh, introduction is, my this lecture is entirely about how an oral medicine person, or how important it is for an oral medicine person to jump into this TMJ bandwagon. Now, there's a lot of noise around, you know, about TMJ, sleep apnea, how all that are involved in the industry. Uh, my personal take is there is no one as best equipped as an oral medicine person because of our training in uh, graduation levels, but understand or diagnose a case. Now, even when I completed my uh, PG, uh, thanks to a lot of uh, wonderful teachers that I have in, uh, had in SDM Darwad and a lot of them are the HODs and colleagues in SDM now, uh, because of them, uh, we had a fair idea of how to get displacement with reduction, with reduction or whatever. And uh, I started off as a radiologist. Uh, I started off my center. It's probably the first, I don't know, arguably the first uh, in 2000 that we started an exclusive oral medicine radiology practice. So there uh, we used to keep diagnosing all these problems. We knew that the headaches were coming. We knew the neck aches were coming knew that uh, the disc displacement, uh, the muscles, uh, the trapezius muscle, all these were involved. Uh, but uh, we never knew how to treat because uh, my center was exclusively those who refer to me. I do the diagnosis and that, that's where it ends. And I send it back to them for treatment. Some of these patients kept coming back. They wanted treatment because they, they, their explanation is very interesting. They said, at least you knew where I had the pain. At least you knew where, uh, when you touched, I knew that you knew that uh, those areas were painful. So at least I want you to find me a solution. Some of them even threatened me with uh, suicides. Then I generally don't give my personal number to patients, but most people I gave them their uh, my numbers. There are four particular ladies that I'm talking about. And, uh, most of them were above 50. 
and one was around 25. So you know, that was difficult. So I went almost all over the world trying to find out what exactly, you know, how to find a solution to this. There are so many schools of uh, uh, training. There's so many uh, concepts, so many philosophies. Uh, I, uh, as a person, I poked in my head into every possible philosophy. What works for me is neuromuscular dentistry. And this, uh, uh, what you see behind is the organization, uh, or the authority for neuromuscular dentistry. It's called ICMO India. And uh, uh, Dr. Rajesh uh, Ravindranathan, a very close friend, actually, introduced me. Uh, we have Dr. Girisha uh, from Bangalore, who is an uh, orthodontist. He's also a vice president. We have a host of people. We have a good team of around 50 people uh, as of now. Uh, we have hosted a very successful uh, neuromuscular conference in Bangalore. Uh, and uh, there was one uh, actually last March, but unfortunately because uh, COVID took away our airway conference. Uh, but whatever it is, a uh, lot of things that were happening. <clears throat> and out of this 50, interestingly, around 15 or 20 of them were oral medicine radiologists. Interesting, but a fact. So some of them have already got into this. I want the rest of us to get into this. This is my only intention of this lecture. So there are a lot of philosophies, a lot of concepts. Um, is my screen uh, visible to everyone? I'm hoping that it is visible. So yes, I'm sir, going yes, ahead. Yes, okay. It's visible. Hello, Tattoo sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, can you minimize the video which you are seeing on the left side of the screen, sir? Yeah, yes. Thank you. That is Dr. Redwin. Yes, sir. <laughs> He's part of my uh, my colleague and staff in uh, Kulashekram. So these are the two centers I run. One is maxillofacial diagnostics. Uh, both are in Kochi. One is for, uh, 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 you know, one is about uh, CBCTs, 3D printing, CAD CAM. Uh, the entire, you know, everything about uh, you know, radiology and related uh, fields. The other one is uh, Dr. Tattoo's TMJ. It is in Kadavandra again, Kochi itself. It is about uh, TMJ management. So the problem is at this age, uh, I know uh, some of us quite are there, but then <laughs> take it from me. On 10, 15 softwares, and now my head is fully, you know, I don't know. At least now there is still some black hair left. Okay, that is uh, about me. And uh, this is my team at Smith's. All of them are neuromuscular dentists. Uh, don't worry, it's not an all men group. There are a couple of females who have joined this. Um, they're very young, they've just joined us, so I couldn't take a fix them into the photograph. And uh, these are some of my teachers. Uh, so you can see this is Dr. Rajesh Ravindranathan. He's uh, an awesome guy. Uh, he heads ICMO India. And this is uh, Ronkin from Russia. This is Fabio from Italy. Then all Canada, Canadians, American. He's from Chennai, but he's an American. This is again another Canadian, Dr. Vikas from Delhi. And myself, of course. Uh, so this was, uh, <clears throat> now just to show you a few cases. Now, generally, we have this feeling that uh, even in our textbooks, etiology says that uh, we uh, we see these cases about 40-year-old females. Now, look at this baby. She's just five-year-old. She's even now under treatment by me. I'm waiting for those teeth to rub. Okay, uh, but she's off pain. She goes to school. She wears that uh, appliance. It's a very large appliance, I must say. Uh, it's not every time that you're very happy giving a large appliance or uh, you know doing things for but when you know that that will solve a lot of problems then there are no other options so this is again another baby she 10 year old and i have uh, multiple 10 year olds it's very interesting there are around 8 10, 10 year olds which we have treated this one you can see how she came here she came, she her complaint was she will never go to school because of backache imagine and to think that that will come to a dentist that is why this these cases i'm showing you to you know, develop for you to develop an interest into looking at these people a little more closely and treatment 
you can see how low it is gave her an appliance beamed it off there is no more appliance we just waited for the, uh, those uh, molars to erupt into a proper occlusion that we have determined using machines and you can see how her shoulder is after treatment she is absolutely pain free she has given a, a, a testimonial on uh, what all happened with her but i don't want to put uh, too many long testimonials because uh, it will take a lot of time from us in case anybody wants to see it's always available this is another case most of the college people will have uh, see this uh, they have seen this case uh, there uh, she came with uh, dystonia and uh, kulashekaram unfortunately we don't have any uh, equipment other than a tens machine now we have developed uh, we have an occlusion sense we have few other machines and uh, this was after two sessions of tensing you can see that she is already improved on the uh, <laughs> on the uh, you know dystonia and this is with uh, a rocobardo neck adjustment you can see how still she has become the head and uh, her main problem was uh, 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 rocobardo is a neck adjustment technique so uh, unfortunately i was not able to go and attend rocobardo's workshop but uh, i learned a few things from here and there so you can see how her this is the same patient you can see how her neck was curved like this see like an s curve and then how it straightened straightened mildly straightened after the tens and then you can see how straight it is post rocobardo and tens see the multiple missing teeth so because these people come from a poor economic background we could not do implants or uh, stuff like that which give you a sturdy uh, but uh, we did complete dentures and uh, till date what i believe is she is fine okay last uh, evaluation uh, that is before covid she was good I, i hope she stays like that because she has just uh, rpds or complete dentures okay now these are generally the orthotics that we give patients when there is a vertical loss all this i'll explain to you in uh, due course of the lecture so you can see these are the functional cusp the upper functional cusp the palatal cusp which hit the fossa and the uh, lower so we these are not called splints these are known as orthotics because they mimic function that means they are anatomic you can see that the, the entire thing is anatomic this was 3d printed uh, you know at uh, center and uh, you can see how nice uh, even if you wear it it's not very obvious uh, of course shades Uh, we don't have the privilege of getting the exact shades of course you can see how the three shades fuses are there here you'll have just one uniform bulb but still the coming of headache neck pain and shoulder pain this doesn't matter to most of the patients now <clears throat> I, i'm showing you different methods this is uh, there is a philosophy that says occlusion does not matter i'm totally against this because this is a patient we did uh, just occlusion adjustment nothing else and she is a medical student that's why i keep putting her testimonial some of you would have seen it already but i'll just uh, quickly go through can't hear ma sir yeah call me just no audio sir okay i'll go in for the next one 
that was uh, DTR, wherein we just did occlusal corrections. And uh, because she has a good airway, she survived uh, despite uh, requiring. Uh, is this audible? I hope. Uh, yes, my, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Now uh, that was what we did with the uh, patient. So we, I, what I'm trying to show is different cases where different philosophies of uh, MJ management have come up, cropped up. Now this one, uh, this particular case, again, this was done at the college. She's a nurse. Uh, she had orthodontic treatment. She had multiple extractions. She had a weird set of composite buildup. Uh, I think the orthodontist did something. Uh, I'm not to blame anybody, but uh, maybe it was their treatment plan, but it did not, it did not work. And interestingly, she landed up with a bite like this and then without any machines, when we didn't even have a tense machine in college, we did all this uh, build up uh, based on uh, the right bite protocol, which I'll be explaining later on. And you can see uh, we did a couple of crowns in the back and uh, composite build up in these areas. And uh, you wouldn't believe me if I tell you, she was not getting pregnant. We can affect lives. This is the same patient. You can see how the neck was curved. Airway was better, but uh, you can see how the edipite was affecting her. And uh, <clears throat> this was her measurements. Uh, in a right bite protocol, which I'll be explaining, we'll be looking at the width of the central incisor, okay? The height of the, uh, that means from CEJ to CEJ. That means upper incisor to lower incisor, CEJ, CEJ. We find the golden vertical because the body is made under golden proportions. Uh, everything I'll come to. This is again uh, another patient. Uh, why I like this uh, thing is he's an engineer. So he liked all the machines. So his explanation is uh, everything had a logic behind what we did. I'll quick, uh, see this is around eight minutes. So I don't want to bore you with uh, these uh, alone. Let me just quickly pray from random excerpts. Can't hear again. Okay. Are you, are you audible now? Yes, audible. Tattoo, sir. Yep. Sir, videos will not be audible, sir, usually in Zoom. Okay, okay. So, testimonial, I think we will not be just able to uh, go ahead. Uh, okay. Since everything is not audible, at least uh, what that uh, patient Wilson was saying is he was under treatment for trigeminal neuralgia, wrongly diagnosed. Now, most of our patients are not in den with dentists, they are with uh, neurology and uh, ENT physiotherapy. And uh, so uh, it is for us to develop this science, show it to the world, and uh, you know, get these patients for proper treatment. After all, our duty is to help these patients. You know, they'll be, go to the neuro, uh, either you go in for a MRI, CT, if you find something, go in for surgeries, or it's lifelong medication. To have a better choice to give him a better life without any of these things. So that is why I kept uh, this thing. So Wilson uh, was very happy with the clients we gave him, and he's still, you know, he's in the final stages of his treatment. He's fine. Uh, because of Corona, we couldn't finish his treatment. He's due to come next month or so if he can, and then we'll finish the management. So uh, this affects the ear, a lot of uh, tinnitus, vertigo. You know, a lot of uh, balance loss, hyperacusia, hypoacusia. So you, you're talking about an area which affects the ear, head, neck, shoulder, and uh, the, uh, the entire uh, person in, in himself. Now, this is another case of trigeminal neuralgia. Why I like it is because I caught him from my waiting room. 
he was fed up with uh, seeing doctors and uh, this particular video he is uh, you know you just need to see the expressions i'll just take out this uh, uh i can't take it out now anyway i'll just play it you can see that he can't talk halfway through the video <clears throat> i'm just skipping through so that we'll uh, Oh, oh, I can't even see the video. Okay, so but uh, he had severe trisomy neuralgia, and once we treated him, just three weeks into the orthotic. Oh, I'm sorry, these videos are not playing. Anyway, I'll go into the next one. It was a case of trisomy neuralgia, and very successfully we treated him. And uh, just an appliance and uh, you know, 24 hours of wear wearing. This is a case from Austria. She sent me this video from Austria. You can see the see the postural dystonia. Um, you can see when she's standing straight, it's fine. But the moment she strikes, tries to straighten out her neck, you can see how she's going into involuntary contractions. So yeah, the moment she tries to lift her hand, you should see she goes in like you know some of those uh, I don't know what we call them in English. Uh, the temple. Some guys are there who know who do the uh, yeah, so you can see uh, these at least you don't need audio. That's why I'm trying to you can see how she's going into involuntary contraction and Here we're just giving her a bite After tensing her muscles and you, we just taken off the bite and You can see she can touch her feet and stand up straight without any assistance. Just the tensing I think audio is going faster than the video. See, she's touching her feet without any problem, where she couldn't even bend down. Okay, so that uh, now question is, can we treat these cases? Yes, we can. We've always learned the TMJ is multifactorial. I still stick, stick with it. It is multifactorial. But when you say teeth, joints, and muscle, uh, what I realize is important is airway. Airway is above all the other three. Once your airway is good, because we run the CT scans of most of these patients, are you know the elder people who are asymptotic who come for implants. Generally, they have lost teeth. Most of the time, we see a large airway. That is where I started understanding, you know, when you have a large airway, whether your teeth are in, pro, in a problem, whether your muscles are in a problem, whether your joints are in a problem, doesn't matter. Because the air takes care of everything. We know that oxygen is an elixir to life. So the moment you apply more air into these patients, it helps. So that is why related to TMJ is, closely related to TMJ is sleep apnea. That session I will not take today because of paucity of time. Now, this is generally what we see. There is a concept of biological, psychological, and social. Are the reasons why we have TMJ problems, of which I have biological as the most important and most, uh, most uh, common cause. <clears throat> why? I'll be explaining soon when I'm coming into. These are the different treatment uh, options that we've all been uh, using, including surgery, Jorlation, that means uh, occlusal correction, uh, this is uh, centric relation, neuromuscular dentistry, uh, then uh, OSA management, so many uh, so many other expansion orthodontics, arthrocentesis surgery. And, uh, you know, we will need to go into all kinds of possibilities. I'm not saying no. And, uh, you know, the access one, this is from Okesan, okay? You can see that deep pain. Of course, superficial pain, let it be there. It's just a couple of them. Deep pain entirely, you know, involves all these areas. Neuropathic pain, which is continuous or episodic, most of it also comes under the TMJ area. So we have a large area like this, which is under the TMJ domain. I'm not saying every case, trisomal neural of a TMJ problem. Proper case history will tell you how this patient landed up with the trigeminal neuralgia. In that history, you will get where the TMJ involvement was. And those kind of cases, I'm assuring you 100% of results when you take them up for uh, TMJ management. Now, 
if you don't get the 100% uh, neuropathic pain out also, if you're removing all the headaches, neck aches and shoulder pains, I think the patient will be grateful to you. Now, uh, I generally refrain from sending them into psychological uh, access. But again, a lot of it uh, you have to assess. Uh, somebody who has a lot of pain will definitely have a psychological issue. As I told you, even pregnancy and delivery of a child was involved. So, you know, that's, uh, these are all neuromuscular disorders that have gone undiagnosed. Most of them start from a bad bite. So a bad bite leads to weak muscle and postural imbalance. Okay. So now how to fix it? <clears throat> that is, uh, you know, even a small restriction, which was slight high point, what happens? The patient senses it, but feels it is okay, it's comfortable. You have all experienced that it's okay. What happens is start av avoiding that side. It's the brain that decides, you know, that side is not as comfortable as the other side. So then you start chewing on one side. So your functional loading is on one side, which starts taking care, uh, you know, uh, uh, traumatizing the muscles. And that is how the entire progression takes place. Now, why the oral cavity and all that? I'm just coming into that. Now, James Coston, you all know it as the famous Coston syndrome. Uh, so, I stand on uh, the feet of so many big giants who went before us. Identify that this TMJ problem is not a small thing. It affects the whole person starting from the toe, big toe to the uh, frontal uh, lobe, lobe. So, you know, uh, we have different names. People have put a lot of names. I'm also trying to put one name, but don't uh, take it seriously. It's just, uh, it may come up. I don't know. TMD, uh, temporomandibular dysfunction, CC, uh, cranial cervical, uh, this thing, uh, cranial cervical uh, mandibular dysfunction, and uh, MPDS with the twisted, uh, this thing, that's what I recommend, myogenic postural dysfunction syndrome. Because we are not talking just the lower jaw, we're talking about the toe from uh, till the, the top of the head. So I feel it's a postural dysfunction. From where the postural dysfunction starts, uh, it's from the myogenic components. And uh, the pain, essentially, the patient feels, as you can understand, it's not from bone. It's not from teeth if it's not from vitus or periodontal. Uh, it is from the muscles. So if you start, that is why I like neuromuscular dentistry. When you focus on the muscles, you are going to get results. So <clears throat> this is Bernard Jangleson. He's the father of neuromuscular dentistry. Now, this is a philosophy. If it has been measured, it's a fact. If it has not been measured, it's an opinion. So this is the philosophy that we follow in neuromuscular dentistry. We try to measure so that we can have repeatable uh, results whenever we see another patient. So trying to measure a thing is uh, always uh, good because you can give down or give to the next of the generation some measurements by which they can help people. Now, there are more than 3,000 plus research papers and three th uh, thesis presentations. And uh, me and my team are glad to have contributed over five original articles in Cranio. So, if you're thinking, uh, anyone can do it. So, here again, teeth, muscles and joint, and this is the airway. Uh, so I've put a large uh, area for the airway because I feel if you want the stomatomatic system to be happy, airway has to be the best. Okay. <clears throat> now look at the stomatognatic system. Teeth are dominant, it accommodative. Joints accommodate, airway accommodate, muscles accommodate. All these accommodations, what happens is uh, in accommodations, what uh, we see is in children, when you have an adenoid or a tonsillar enlargement. Generally, the ENT says, you know, it's okay, it will go when you grow. But by the time this child from 7 to maybe 15 has grown up, 8 years of accommodation has taken place. And that is the problem that uh, we see dominantly all over the, the, the medical signs in itself. So when we ask an ENT, you know, we need his uh, adenoids off or tonsils off, they generally don't take it that seriously. So that is one aspect. Now, 
<clears throat> no matter how malpositioned the teeth, muscles struggle to create a centric occlusion. It's the same way that your eyes are always uh, like the water balance that you use in uh, carpentry. Always balanced and uh, then the head and neck alter, keep them like that. So straight, straight, similar to that, so struggle, struggling muscles are hypertonic, leading to headaches, migraines, neck aches, and shoulder aches. Now, <clears throat> this is what uh, this involves, reduction of noxious stimuli, faulty occlusion that causes the facial masticated muscle to be hypertonic, thereby re relaxing those struggling hypertonic muscles. Now, this is the TM joint. I'm not going to waste more time on the uh, slides here. Now, let's stick to this slide. Why is all this important? This is something that I love explaining all the time. First of all, the vortex, uh, most frequently used and maximum used joint. Okay, let's look at force. On a regular bite, you have 200 to 400 newtons of force. For a maximum bite force, that is a fight of Lee bite. 500 to 700 newtons of force that is developed. All this I've taken from uh, uh, journals and uh, scientific data. Uh, then the elbow joint, uh, um, that is from American baseballers, their elbow is supposed to be the best, 400 newtons. And the knee from American footballers, around 600 newtons. And the spinal column with all those bones together, 2,400 newtons. So the oral cavity, so this is the force. You can see how much of force is generated by a hanging piece of bone, that is the mandible. The oral cavity being the prime intake unit in the body exposed to environment with regular damage and repair processes in abundance. It's only prudent to expect damage, repair and symptoms. So you can have a problem that starts from the top of your body or from your feet. Because these are generally the area. Not everybody is in a car accident. Not everybody has a sport injury where, you know, there is a fracture or something of the bone. But most of the times, more than your feet getting injured, I think as dentists, you will, uh, you will accept that there is always going to be some dental work or some decay, some periodontitis or whatever that is taking place in the... So that is why, that is where actually the key importance of an oral medicine radiologist in the, is there. Because the oral cavity is where I believe that most of these problems start. If you're looking at the airway, the nasal airway is taken care of, care by the ENT. The oropharynx, the airway there, because of the tongue posture, is supposed to be... That of us not being active it, uh, takes uh, center stage. So this, these are the reasons why the TM joint is very important. Yeah, uh, it has uh, the, it uses maximum force, uses maximum. Uh, it is maximum used. You can see every time you swallow, your teeth have to come in touch. Okay, so there is a lot of use here, and unlike any other joint, this one is an important joint. So you will understand. You will accept this much, and. More interestingly, have you ever bit on something very hard? Let's say you have a mixture and suddenly there is a hard thing. See how fast the teeth are separated. The, the, the reflex there is called a guarding reflex. Now this guarding reflex is not possible if you have a lot of nerves and synapses and all that. So this guarding reflex is held aided by around seven nerves, cranial nerves, which are directly connected to the cranial stem. This guarding, you can see how important this area is. So all of us must have some day or the other bitten on something very hard while chewing on something very soft. And you can see how fast we have just opened up the maxilla and mandible and guarded the bite. Now, this could be essentially, as uh, Dr. Prafula Tumati said, it could have been because of uh, evolution. If you broke a tooth in those days, it's equal to death. So, maybe it developed from there. But we are using all these things. Now, tell me one other joint which can give this kind of importance. So, this is the importance of the TM joint. The anatomy, I won't spend time because we have limited time. Now, it's been proven that roughly 90% of TMJ dysfunctions are myogenous. Okay, these are all the muscles that are involved. Um, I wouldn't stick to anatomy because uh, my purpose is different. 
um, you can see now what uh, our uh, uh, load effect fulcrum uh, this is a head posture per se according to me although all the textbooks say it is a lever 3 principle because they have considered the tm joint as the end point they have considered the masseter as the loader and uh, food as the uh, so, sorry the tmj as the fulcrum and uh, so. for me head posture is a lever 1 posture and this posture is very important because the effort is by the neck muscles to keep this head straight you have a pivot which is either c1 c2 and the load which is on the chewing side so this is i believe it's a lever one principle and this chart is just to show you when you have a forward head posture that means when you start uh, this is one study that we have published the moment your airway gets restricted you've seen um, uh, these uh, children who are choking uh, you seen all the grannies tell them look up there is a cockroach or a lizard up there look up look up so why they are asking them to look up is not because they want to scare them with the cockroach or the lizard it is because they want them to keep their airway patent so the same accommodation takes place in your head the moment your airway is restricted you have dorsiflexion that means your head first moves up <clears throat> and this has been published in cranio i'll show you some of the articles okay so the moment this moves up strain is now coming on the cervical vertebrae that means c6 c5 c6 c7 this moment and to accommodate the head goes forward now when you you can see how much of pounds of force it increases when there is you can see how two inches forward gets you 32 pounds and three inches forward 42 pounds you can see how it goes forward an easy way of assessing this is to check if uh, when your patient is sitting upright or standing upright whether the uh, shoulder, the ear, uh, are at the shoulder level and straight. If they are forward, then they have, they are symptomatic or not, they still have an airway issue. So their head is going forward. So this is the fulcrum. This is generally what we consider as a lever three principle because this is the fulcrum. You can see the effort here and the load here. Like uh, the when you consider the head and neck. So. We were stuck here for a long, long period. I mean, we used to, it is general that people, if you look at uh, Dawson or uh, if you look at the, all the Gelb or, or whoever came before us, the facilities that they had to measure, everybody is on a race to measure. Uh, when you, they had a measure, they had to use only transcranial and transpharyngeal views of the TMJ. That is, with those uh, facilities, they developed a lot of uh, the GELB 4, 7 and all that. I'll be telling you, I'll show you a few of these images. But then, now, we have a lot of, um, uh, we have a lot of devices which tell us there's a lot of other issues which are leading to this problem. And those are postural and airway. So, I'll just show you some of these. Uh, this is, uh, this is what I explained to you just now, uh, which is a lever 1, okay. Uh, these are a few ligaments and uh, some of these ligaments are the reasons why you have different uh, kinds of uh, uh, symptoms from the TMJ dysfunction. That means even if you don't have a masseter which is uh, tender, you can have uh, a fascia that is tender, you can have a ligament that is tender, it can cause tinnitus, vertigo, whatever, depending on uh, what fascia or ligament is involved. This is the relationship. I'm just uh, you know, skipping through a few slides because uh, time. Okay, so you can see the entire fascia that is from the head uh, down to the toes. And uh, uh, you can see the different uh, ways that it affects. Now the nerve, uh, it's the dentist nerve. 60% of all neural tissue of the 12 cranial nerves is the trigeminal nerve. You can see how important that is. Nerve innovations and all these other, um, these are all general uh, anatomy uh, stuff. So I wouldn't, uh, since everybody is quite familiar to that, I would just uh, skip these. Okay. <clears throat> now, this is uh, how a clicking starts. Just to, this is an occlusal prematurity which leads to a noxious proprioceptive signal. Which leads to an avoidance conditioning response a sense, and a sensory engram is developed, uh, which leads to another chronic muscle hyperactivity. 
uh, RAS proteins are excited and uh, pain spasm cycle starts and muscle hyperactivity. And when it is the lateral pterygoid muscle, obviously, you know that it starts pulling out on the articular disc and then it leads into a click. Okay. So this displacement and all that takes place. These are the different extraoral signs, uh, headaches, migraine, clenching, system, neck ache, shoulder pains. All this are uh, uh, coming into the realm of all this. Uh, these are the different uh, signals intraorally. Most important signal that I, as an oral medicine person to the uh, rest of the oral medicine people is, first you open the mouth, ask the patient to stick the tongue out. Look at malambati classification. Malambati classification, uh, most of these patients where you have an airway restriction, if they are three and four, then definitely your patient will have symptoms. He may not be able to tell you that these I have headaches or neck pains, but the moment you start examining him, and uh, you know, asking for a detailed history, everything will start pouring out. Now, the first thing is I always check for the malambati classification, and I do an retrodiscal articular palpation to see if there's any uh, disc, uh, you know, capitis or something like that. Then I do a palpation of the lateral pterygoid muscle and temporalis insertion and massive tear muscles. Then I go into the neck, trapezius, sternocleidomastoid, and the uh, low back, that is L, uh, L4, L5. This much is my basic examination. The moment uh, we do this itself, we know that whether the patient is, needs to be taken care of by us. <clears throat> Symptoms can be ascending, as I told you earlier. That means if you have a foot injury, or if you have a uh, length, the foot is uh, different. That means you, you have short leg syndrome. So when somebody has a short leg, definitely they will develop TMJ dysfunctions. It is not for us to treat it. It is for the physiotherapist to assess the leg, give an orthotic and correct it. And if there is any symptom per, per, persistent, then we correct it. This is when the, um, the, 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 the symptoms are ascending okay, or when descending. Most of the time, what I've seen is around 80% of my cases are descending. That means it starts from the TM joint. Okay. As I, what, whatever I've been telling you, all the airway, the uh, right, everything uh, leads to this problem. We have different um, so, cervical rotation, muscle palpation, all these things. Uh, we send for ENT consultation, sleep study, chiropractor, uh, which is uh, luxury uh, in few cities we have otherwise we use physiotherapists these are different uh, some of the optimal lateral steps since i'm talking to a lot of radiologists i don't need to explain on this but in this particular patient you can see there is a large airway a beautiful airway. now in this beautiful airway too this patient came to me with a tmj problem okay when the airway is so large, it is very easy to identify that it has to be just from the occlusion. You can see there is a supra erupted eight and an under under erupted or uh, uh, another upper eight. So I just needed to. This is a doctor, by the way, he's an endodontist. So I just needed to do clinical occlusal correction for this patient. Okay, so I can't put his pictures because uh, he may be familiar to most of you. But <clears throat> I'm just showing you because airway is there, but he still had a DMJ problem. And just a bite correction. I didn't use any machine, just the occlusal correction, which uh, all the prostrondists know uh, they generally do. And uh, he is uh, asymptotic since at least uh, 2017, so around three years now. Uh, this, These are generally what we see. You can see the airway restrictions, the adenoids, the thickening of the uvula, okay, the extension of the uvula. Uh, you can see deep bite, protrusion, hyperactive uh, mentalis, uh, lip avertures, and uh, neck position. All these you will see this is a cross bite and still uh, uh, comparatively patent uh, radiograph. Okay. Now, on an OPG, what I look for is generally what I look for this. Um, generally, I see everywhere that people mistake it. This is not the articular remnants, this is the articular tubercle. This is the articular tubercle. It is not in the glenoid uh, plane. It is away and uh, more uh, 
what do we say mesial to the uh, buccal uh, to the glenoid plane so this is a irrelevant finding in fact as of uh, when you're talking occlusion this is the articular tubercle and this is the eminence i keep saying this because i see a lot of us making a lot of mistakes here this is the articular eminence so actually you have a disc space here you see like this but when you look like this there is hardly any disc space so this has to be corrected and you can see the still quite the space you can see some amount of erosion there you can see the uh, how the occlusion has changed here because of a supra erupted arch on the right, right side and how the um, beautifully done uh, bridge but fortunately this is uh, the curve of speed is not maintained so this patient is generally when he he or she does lateral excursions it's going to be muscle hypertonicity you can see all these features which you are familiar are the 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 uh, the masseter muscle tags that are seen there and the hyperactive gonial angle more importantly on an opg you believe it or not you can see the airway quite clearly it's not necessary to go in for a lateral stuff unless in certain cases where uh, the age has created a lot of issues sure you can see how uh, the occlusion here has happened so this patient definitely has a airway restriction you can see the same thing here this is restricted normal opg you will see a much larger airway so this because all uh, i believe only these few pointers would be helpful uh, helpful to most of you that's why i'm just sticking to that uh, this is all uh, you are used to the ls cyst and uh, all the uh, beaking of the condyles and all that now <coughs> alternate findings now this is a patient you can see that the condyle looks quite okay you can see the space is quite okay on the other side but there's a lot of dental work here you can see there's a crown here there's you can see the six is super erupted okay obviously when you're chewing you don't chew straight you chew you have lateral movements you if you remember prosthetics the teardrop shape uh, that we used to talk about the moment you go in for a lateral excursion all these will start hyperfiring on the muscle now this patient you can see the airway volume was just 17.5 what i measure is part of the uh, you know the posterior nasal spine backwards and the infra higher to the c4 be superior of c4 specific studies to help me but what i i found out is around 30 cc of airway volume is good for this patient you can see the airway volume has come down to 17.5 now let's look at why it happened you can see the deep bite here and see the mandibular position backwards you see it's around 75 degrees so it's around 2 or 3 degrees ideally would be 80 degrees but uh, let's not look at even ideal it's still it's around 4 degrees behind and what has happened push the tongue and the soft tissue along with that Exteriorly. Now, if I cut this area like this, you can see that the entire thing will become green, and it will be about BCC. So this is the crux of the problem that we are talking about. You can see what happens here. I told you about neck curvature. You can see how curved this neck is. Same patient. Okay, I think it was last week when patient came. So this is the. Uh, you can see uh, just to show you how the neck curvature takes place. She'll need physiotherapy adjustment. This is the same. You can see uh, I've taken another uh, <clears throat> airway volume at 19.3. Now this is another finding that radiographically we've seen. You know, form follows function. The lateral pterygoid, you know, the lateral pterygoid plate to the disc and the pterygoid fovea. Now one side when it pulls out the disc, the other side the pterygoid plate gets elongated. This was studied by us. You can see how nicely this elongation is seen. Originally, it should have been just around here. You see how much of extension has taken place on in these. So these are all published in Cranio by us, and uh, so it's it's just a matter of thinking. You know, uh, if one side uh, the muscle which is in spasm, which is le short, lengthened uh, by in short, which uh, its length is shortened, then it is pulling out the disc on one side, and on the other side it must be pulling off the a pterygoid plate so this is a classical example of form follows function another measurement that we take is the occipital condyles to the for the dense you can see if neck neck is uh, or neck curvature this is the same case where i showed you the neck curvature is altered 
So this again, this is under study, if I'm not mistaken, or already published. I don't remember exactly. These are our publications, a uh, few of them uh, related to what I'm talking to you right now. So now the concept of optimum, uh, uh, is that a marking to, oh, it's an accidental marking if I, okay. Now let's see, this is a patient who came to me just last week. She came to me because this bridge had uh, come off. Uh, this bridge had come off, it had loosened off, okay. So I uh, looked at her and uh, she was treated by me some five years back. She's asymptotic. She has no TMJ problem. She is around 67 year old female and uh, no pain, nothing of that. She's very grateful for the, uh, for having removed her headaches and all that. But this, unfortunately, this bridge came loosened out. So we re-cemented it. So anyway, I just took a CT just to see how uh, uh, she was doing. Uh, and uh, you can see, now why I'm showing you this particular image here, you can see the gap is there, the disc is okay. Here, there's hardly any disc space. So <clears throat> what uh, Gelb said, you know, the condyle has to be specifically in one position, doesn't really matter. As long as the rest of the factors are taken care of. Those are muscles and airway now the same patient i'll show you the airway these are the condyle you can see that still there is that uh, beaking uh, she's uh, asymptotic and very happy with our treatment but you can see the beaking is still there our disc is not recaptured uh, maybe it's a pseudo disc or whatever it's a fibrous disc or whatever it's not catching back but because oh i didn't put the uh, this is her airway you see her airway how she has an airway it's the same lady Beautiful uh, around 26 cc of airway. That is why she's asymptotic. That is why I stick to airway as the prime in all these factors. Now, this is Gelb. It says, you know, the ideal condylar position should be four, four by seven. Uh, this is uh, considering the year that all this was, research was done. I appreciate that, but uh, this case that I showed you doesn't stick or their money doesn't stick around with uh, Gelb's proposal. So they're seeing all kinds of possibilities. Then uh, I think I have just 10 more minutes uh, for an hour. So these are the different possible uh, reasons uh, or uh, the problems that we see. Uh, I think uh, this is being recorded. So uh, once the recording is sent, you can get down all these data. Okay. And uh, these are, you can see the tongue scalloping all throughout. This is the canine. Uh, which is uh, by uh, this is you can see the bicuspid drop off. You see this arch here and the canine up. This is a severe uh, TMJ patient, obviously. You can see the tongue crenation. So airway is restricted, plus occlusion is deranged. Then you can 100% say that this patient has a TMJ problem. This is uh, not a good photo for malambati classification. Those who want to get the spelling of malambati right. Uh, you Google it and check images, you will get uh, Malambati 1, 2, 3, 4 um, uh, classification. So it's easier for you to do that. M-A-L-A-M-B-A-T-T-I, Malambati. Okay. Uh, this is not the way you check for Malambati. And uh, so you can't say this is Malambati 4 unless you see the orofarynx. <clears throat> this is bicuspid drop off. And uh, fractions, of course, uh, that uh, I, I think by everybody knows. Uh, when we talk about abstractions, you're talking about cervical uh, enamel tear off or break off. And, and uh, then what happens? The periodontium also gets affected. So most of these cases, this is me thinking a bit too loudly. Uh, you know, periodontists do not accept it, but I feel Rapidly progressing periodontitis is not got to do with your genetics or uh, your, uh, uh, you know, your uh, all the other factors that generally they talk about. I think it's a bad bite. Nothing else. Because I've done a couple of cases, just corrected the bite and the bone grew back in six months. Beautifully grow back. I had to maintain them with uh, periodontal therapy every three months till the bone was normal. Fortunately, I have, uh, because of uh, Restrictions on COVID, I couldn't get those images. <clears throat> Tori, another big indicator for a lot of glucal disharmony or, or low force loading. I think Dr. Atul Satur from Darwad has done a lot of study in this uh, uh, in this aspect. 
is found that most of the where the forces are in excess you will have uh, a lot of uh, tori uh, which are uh, seen and so these are an indicator you can see how posture uh, uh, by just basic treatment you know giving an orthotic itself the moment it's a say uh, it's all i think it's uh, next week or something you can see how his posture how his neck his head is tilted and the neck is rotated and you can see how improved it is i do not say this is a perfect one yet but considering the situation that he was in is asymptotic and he's absolutely fine so <clears throat> these are different uh, equipment that we use uh, one is the esg to identify sounds uh, same thing uh, joint vibration analysis uh, the advantage of a joint vibration analysis uh, the data uh, the software is also uh, connected or linked to the piper's classification so the data is directly transferred to a piper's classification you whether you have a joint with uh, what kind of displacement it's a bit easy it's a bit expensive for uh, an equipment just to hear the sounds you know it's around 8 lakh so i have i have uh, the esg which comes much cheaper so these are the reasons why uh, we have a my so this is the importance of myocentric and how to get to a myocentric is we use a right bat a right by protocol this protocol is very simple or uh, as the as the, the the world is has a golden proportion based on those proportions the golden proportion and dr hang shimpashi's uh, shimbashi uh, measurements that means you know, you know how much your vert i optimum vertical should be uh, this was developed by the las vegas institute lvi scale and uh, one of my colleagues dr nihal from uh, alapuram he found out i'm just saying you know how much uh, as indians and uh, you know how much new this field is how much more everybody can get involved dr nihal this identified he did a calculation and he found out if you multiply 7 by 2.08 get 14.6 multiply 10 you get again uh, you know 20.9 so jo jo pe agar mai se bhi na keh rahe hain can you mute that uh, please okay so this is the width of the central incisor multiplied by 2.08 gives you the golden vertical that means what was optimum cej to cej of that patient okay now if he has a vertical which is less then you need to add that means when you need to add you can either add using uh, you have to add using a appliance that is where we use an appliance when you have a that means your cej to cej is better it's it's negative that means you still have a better word what is required then you can do reduction and md that is called uh, dtr or disclusion time reduction robert uh, thanks to dr robert kerstin uh, he uh, he uh, developed this concept and it is done using a d scan and the emgs <clears throat> this is uh, so when you need a reduction which includes a uh, uh, reduction in the uh, decrease in vd uh, with occlusal recalibration and uh, coronoplasty to dtr so these are our concepts uh, the protocol tens therapy mandibular kinesiograph that means uh, we use either a bioresearch uh, jaw tracker or a k7 jaw tracker we give the orthotic uh, we on the orthotic we do the digital micro occlusion and then we get these are the different tens uh, machines that are available um, this uh, this this is by mytronics and this for by by research all are good so you can use any uh, but st uh, for starters i would say you should buy one of the better uh, uh, tens machines and start using them in your clinic and you will start seeing wonders now <clears throat> This is how about the tens works because there is essentially an andidromic effect. It doesn't. Uh, this particular tens machines do not work on the muscles. They pulse the nerves in such a way that there is an andidromic effect that comes down back from the a message that comes down back from the uh, brain to the nerves, relax all the muscles. That is how these machines are. We, we are able to use for lateral pterygoids, medial pterygoids. muscles that are which are absolutely unaccessible when you access them through the nerves 
get the entire muscle group to relax and that is why these are more uh, these are more expensive and uh, very specific they have the uh, action potential time used as 1.44 seconds so these are patented so you need to get those machines okay these are uh, these are my uh, the the kinesiograph the emg readings before treatment you can see how once the tense is done how settled the uh, emg readings are this is the jaw tracker it tells you whether this is the habitual trajectory that means where the patient used to bite most of the time once you've tensed the patient you can see how the jaw comes forward and uh, downward and this is the myo trajectory that means where the muscles are relaxed and then you ask the incisal take the incisal guidance and de de decide where you want to keep your uh, freeway space and design the orthotic and at that point take a bite and uh, check with the bite again are you in the uh, myo trajectory give the appliance you can see how nicely these appliances are clear they'll sit there's no trouble the patient can wear it all the time and the difference is amazing <clears throat> we keep adjusting with the uh, bosch um, 8 micron 20 micron 40 micron so we get a proper ear balanced bite on either side that's why we call it an orthotic not a Splint. Okay. Uh, phase two, we do either if there is a large vertical, then we have to go in for either orthodontic treatment if all the teeth are there. If they have already done a lot of prosthodontic work, then we go in full mouth rehabilitation with crowns and bridges. And uh, we use uh, in orthodontics, we use supra eruption where expansion of the maxilla is needed. We do expansion, we use MSC, that is maxillary skeletal expander. You can see some of the work that has been done. This was a patient, uh, one of those ladies uh, who told me that she wanted to suicide because of the pain. And you can see this randomly used to just do the, uh, the appliance was done. This is how we finished her. You can see the posterior crown. And uh, she still uh, sends me. and which is not suicided as so, neuromastal orthodontics is done on either side uh, <clears throat> this is the right bite protocol uh, sleep apnea i'll just uh, uh, skip through because we are already out of time um, so i'll just uh, quickly go uh, into my these are the um, this is the concept uh, it's not a concept anymore actually I've seen a lot of this happening they are like marionettes um, if you I wouldn't say string puppets because string puppets uh, are different from marionettes marionettes are interconnected with uh, heads uh, if you remember if you remember that old toy when you press the entire uh, whatever that boy just falls down that kind of a thing is known as a marionette so we are connected like that all the bones muscles are all connected the moment you have a problem you can see how the forward head posture the uh, l4 l5 getting affected the hip shifting can you see all these changes all these cha changes take place in the um, the patients so <clears throat> and all this information comes together it may look as if it is too much or uh, you know but you start taking baby steps into this first step that i want all the uh, the oral medicine people to do is to just start examining your patients properly examine the lateral pterygoid muscles examine the temporalis insertions examine the trapezius and then you'll start seeing uh, see check for malambati classification then you'll start seeing a lot of uh, patients having all these uh, problems now uh, this one more thing that I want to note, I don't know if uh, it will be offensive to a lot of people, but uh, what I have to say, I have to say, the all medicine radiologists, most of the time, we've been sitting on the brink of everything. And uh, we've been, uh, you know, diagnosing things. Yes, it's very good because uh, as long as uh, that, uh, that diagnosis of yours doesn't get or earn you the respect that it actually needs, there is only one way that is eat all this uh, so-called difficult cases and prove your metal 
this is what i think uh, i may not be a very you know uh, you know a very uh, excellent uh, oral medicine radiologist or uh, whatever but what i know is if there's nobody doing something then i think we should be doing it and this is uh, exactly the conditions that we have treated in my, in my place uh, you won't believe there are three cases of burning mouth syndrome which have been fully treated i don't know how to publish it because other than the patient's uh, scale or uh, burning scale and uh, you know testimonial i don't have anything so i don't know how to do uh, this thing but these people do not have any medication are wearing the appliance and one thing about this burning mouth patients i have seen is they will never come back once you have uh, taken off their burning because <clears throat> they fear if you do some adjustment and if the burning comes back they are they're scared they are very happy with whatever they <laughs> we have already done they don't come back the review and uh, recall is difficult with this particular group of uh, patients A lot of asthma cases were healed uh this the intention was not tre to treat asthma but uh, a, a lot of patients you know why because of the scalene muscles scalene muscles when they got relaxed scalenes have a direct collect connection to the top of the lung so when they are in uh, spasm you develop asthma like i believe this is the research see when I, any symptom goes i have to find out why it happened so it's an accident but i need to know why so this is what i understood it's the scalene muscles that are really relaxing we use the tens and all that and then uh, the orthotic helps and these people who uh, i have a lot of testimony that the asthma has gone but that doesn't mean i can treat asthma it depends exclusively on your case selection so a lot of cases of headaches migraines trigeminal neuralgia cervical dystonia myofascial pain dysfunction syndrome what you call is palatal myoclonus one case but many uh, so facial palsy lot of cases lot of improvement is seen uh, I, i i do not claim that facial palsy was fully treated because uh, i couldn't but a lot of improvement i mean the patient was really ha happy because they never thought it could develop that much so to learn uh, uh, you need to deprogram that means just like what you are going to planning to do with the bite or the occlusion engrams that the uh, the brain is sen sensing from your occlusion the periodontal ligaments and the bite so just like a deprogramming and a bite you have to relearn what we learned okay because that is quite old now and reprogram yourself or re learn yourself to and one thing it is not easy this this fact It's always there there is nowhere you can sit back and relax keep learning keep learning and it's beautiful so <clears throat> it's teamwork essentially as an nm nm dentist as uh, you can see my secret agenda being published here i want that to be the omr people okay um although we have a beautiful group of uh, general dentists and other specialists who are already into it uh, i appreciate them but Uh, you know oma people can do better because you are the first kind of contact for the patient and uh, you see a lot, a lot of cases there and airway specialists from the child to adult you know, they say from in utero in utero starts the treatment uh, hypoxia of the mother or uh, even uh, blood uh, the rbc uh, reduced rbcs in mothers cause a lot of problems like uh, airway issues to the kid These are all scientifically proven. There's a lot of studies uh, out there. So it's again, value adds to my concept that airway is fine. And chiropractors, nuka chiropractors, which are specialized neck chiropractors, ENT, neurologists, physiotherapists, massage therapists, podiatrists, psychologists, psychiatrists, all these people are needed in your team. We don't want to remember, be just diagnosis and imaging specialists. can change the world by treating these major conditions and to bring this uh, point or to drive in this point if anyone still thinks omr is non clinical god bless you this is ikmo india uh, yeah, i'm uh, i welcome all of you to join uh, we have regular seminars by international speakers and uh, local speakers 
and uh, this is one way forward of learning and how to go forward on uh, these uh, these uh, things okay so i um, i would like because i have overshot my time by another 10 minutes i hope everybody's starting to get hungry if any questions i would like to take them and i i love questions please do ask me hello hey hello hey hello kagun uh, yeah, yes sir um, a very good up to you good afternoon to you too. um actually uh, i am a yeah i am a uh, research scholar and in the working in the field of medical designing so I was oh, uh, TMJ designs uh, followed by the FP analysis of those times. Oh, very good. So uh, I had. A... Hello, you're breaking. So. Hello, uh... So, uh, Dr. Paulomi, are you there? I think uh, some network problem. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh, uh, can you hear me, sir? Now we can hear you. Uh, you were breaking off earlier. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so no uh, in the in the beginning of your presentation, you showed a slide that had uh, dentures and were uh, uh, were three D printed. So yeah. may I please know uh, the material that was used and the, the technology for printing those dentures? Uh, uh, the orthotic dentures. I don't think I showed uh, any case. Uh, the orthotic that was 3D printed, uh, resin uh, printing. It's for resins. We got this. The tooth colored uh, resin was not available in India. Uh, on my one of my visits to the US, one of my friend gave me a tank of uh, the tooth colored resin that I smuggled in. <laughs> I just got it in because. Uh, officially, still we it's not available, but the clear resins are available. Um, we use an American 3D printer uh, and uh, a cheap one. I'm, I'm not used to an expensive one. It's just the work of uh, getting the design done. Uh, luckily, we we send the patient with the bite for the uh, CBCT. So that that gives us the, uh, the you know STL files for the uh, orthotic. Nice. So they are not available. I'd like to tell you that we have these uh, printers here in Chandigarh. Ah, okay. At uh, we have one at Punjab Engineering College and another is my uh, startup here in sector 38. So if you want to get uh, these printed in uh, India itself at reasonable cost, you can call me anytime. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you can send thing. the personal uh, WhatsApp or you can send your personal message also. So moving on to next question. Anybody? Uh, before that, I should thank you, sir. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. And I thank all the uh, delegates and the part participants for participating in this amalgamation of interactive, innovative and informative webinar session. And hopefully all have gained a lot of knowledge, sir. So any time is very less. So any other question from anybody? Uh, there are a lot of questions on the chat. Uh, if, yes, uh, sir. Yes, sir. If you would if like to is. share some knowledge about that, sir. Uh, let me see. Usually what we do is host it. Hello. Please, good question, Sylvie. Uh, let me see if I can. Answer so those questions in the chat also. In the meantime, if you could ask me, it'll be easier. Uh, uh, Any question from anybody else? Uh, so I have, I have another question regarding TMJ design. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Shall, I, shall I proceed? Yeah, please. So, uh, uh, according according to the uh, 
when the joint opens, uh, the the TMJ joint uh, that is the condylar section, it slides in the front, uh, like posteriorly to a certain angle. So how can we decide that angle while designing the implant? Designing the implant. Yeah, like suppose like uh, some my my little in the mechanical uh, aspect. Uh, so when the jaw jaw op opens, it opens in the downward and it opens in the downward direction first, and then it slides uh, in the posterior direction. So the sliding mechanism happens at a certain angle. Mm -hmm. So how can we consider that angle for the design? Uh, you are talking about a asymptotic patient or a symptomatic patient? Uh, it is a symptomatic patient. Symptomatic patient. Now, uh, what uh, this uh, TENS machines, I couldn't go in detail about each machine. What we use this ultra low frequency TENS or the ALF TENS, what it does is, I told you, you know, we uh, use the cranial nerve uh, 5 and cranial nerve 7. We cast them uh, both. Uh, that is the spinal accessory and the uh, you know facial and trigeminal nerves together uh, five seven and twelve okay these three nerves are tensed together using these uh, machines once we tense them I, I, as i told you there's an andidromic effect which give all these three cranial nerves give messages to the muscles to relax what we are talking about is we are looking at the mandibular position where all the muscles are relaxed. That means you have three dimensional changes in the mandible. That means pitch, roll, and yaw. If you can see what I'm showing you, pitch is the vertical. Okay. The roll of the mandible is from the side to side, and angled movement is the uh, yaw. Okay. So these three are taken care of when you have done a successful tensing of the muscle group. Now, not every one sitting of tense is enough uh, depending on the severity and how cramped the patient is we give them multiple sittings sometimes it is uh, once uh, you know every day for three or four days we are sure that most of the muscles are relaxed the muscles are relaxed we are getting the ideal mandibular position using a jaw tracker we find out exactly where you want the bite to be and based on that if you're doing your implants okay and loading them uh, again when you're loading implants the most important thing is i see most of the implants which are being placed they are kept under occlusion what is the purpose of giving an implant if you're going to give it in under occlusion i want the to be in occlusion because the implant doesn't have any periodontal structures it is always better that it doesn't load the uh, it, it is not the first tooth of contact that means you allow it to you allow the other teeth with periodontal ligament the first tooth uh, first point of contact and then allow this implant also to come into occlusion that would be the ideal way no, so what we do uh, uh, does, does that answer your question or uh, sir one more question is there uh, yes yes uh, from dr deepa patil a patient comes with a severe joint pain clicking and restricted mouth opening other than medications and arthrocentosis, what would you advise, sir? Um, again, uh, as I told you, uh, we still say it is multifactorial. Arthrocentosis is good because uh, you can get the pa patient off the pain. You are not removing the exact etiology. After six months, these patients will come back to you again with pain. What do you do again? Uh, Uh, what happens in surgery? Uh, I must say this because uh, this emphasizes why we have to take an active role. We can save a lot of patients from surgery. Then uh, the other the arthrocentesis and one more uh, uh, treatment modality that uh, Mamad asked for. The medication, uh, sir. Medication. Medication. How long? For how long? How long? Yes, sir. That is a uh, question. Like we give it for one week and then they come back after two, three months. And and then, not two, three months, they are trying to manage with yes, that sir. one week's medication. So, and we don't have the facility to buy the bio EMG tense machine. So, uh, we have normal, uh, the Indian versions of small tense machine, we use it. They uh, are relieved for some time, but after that, so 
what is they can so the, since you uh, if you can live with if she uh, it depends on what stage the patient does she have back pain does she have uh, feet uh, knee pain does she have uh, hip uh, pro, uh, rotations does she have neck and uh, head, uh, changes in which case you will need a proper tens machine and physiotherapy both together to align her properly first then take a bite and give an orthotic and uh, mm -hmm. 100% she'll come back uh, very happy Oops, this sir. is for lifetime lifelong we are not doing any uh, any surgery not doing any harm to the patient mm -hmm. we are only straightening out that as i told you the marionette or the string puppet you straightening out everything together uh, you won't believe I, I i may sound i may sound a little bit too much there is something called rolfing r o l f i n g rolfing that is for fascia manipulation now rolfing if i have to go i have to go to the us to learn and it takes months together to learn which i can't afford and i can't go so yes, what yes. i have done youtube videos and learned now i am doing okay. those rolfing myself okay. and frankly you won't believe i was not sure about myself but slowly you know what to do is cervical spondylitis yeah, please, yeah, also sir. inclusive for tng disorder symptoms and the orthopedic person is treating with the physio exercise but little relief is there so how to convince those patients for dental tmd therapy there is no uh, you don't need to convince the patient here if you have this uh, if you do uh, see most of these patients cervical spondylitis fibromyalgia of the neck these are the two baby names that i always hear okay they come from all these orthopedics and everything uh, after some time uh, like you only said they are not getting any relief from there because you get temporary relief but no permanent solution so they will come to you okay why did you have already implanted the seed that this is probably from your bite and that has to be corrected for these to be uh, to align themselves and get corrected you really have to tell them this is what it is it will come to you because a pain patient i hope none of us luckily has uh, had to go through any pain, severe pain worst pains uh, they say are ear aches and uh, dental pain and then delivery pains the, the you can imagine having pain here all the time these patients will seek you out and come to you but the message has to go that this is your problem okay how to go about it you, we will all have to there is a lot of uh, things that we'll have to learn to the process all workshops conferences and uh, it will come to you another question from dr lehri uh, she would like to know what is your opinion regarding the use of ozone oil as a treatment modality for treating mpds patients ozone oil uh, as i said uh, i am not familiar with ozone oil i have not used ozone oil but from what i gauge understand uh, again for how long we are not uh, again all these are not specific to the problem we are just trying to find a solution for the time being but for how long you know uh, if uh, you have some experience in uh, using ozone oil um, i would like you to uh, share it with us because i have not personally i have not used uh, ozone oil uh, i do some... I, i do use a lot of uh, you know physiotherapy i do use a lot of uh, um, massage oils all that for uh, just you know as i told you uh, i'm doing physiotherapy myself now because uh, to get a chiropractor is difficult but right now i have a very good uh, physiotherapy so he does all the job otherwise we used to do all the manipulation before we take a proper bite uh, dr mamta would you like to ask question dr mamta are you there dr arvinda is there she okay. would like to dr mamta's question is flashing but it's not very clear dr arvinda Yeah, sir. I just wanted to ask you about your take on ultrasound therapy for TMDs. Ultrasound, yeah. Uh, that is what ultrasound uh, lasers. All that, all those are helpful. Uh, but uh, I think you, uh, every should, everybody should understand. You know, we have to treat the bite. There is no question of no not treating the bite. 
get the airway correct okay ultrasound and lasers are good for you to achieve that bite that means your patient comes in with severe pain now you don't like to put a patient directly into tens or any other treatment without getting them to trust you so the first phase of trusting uh, the earning the trust of the patient lasers uh, phototherapy your uh, ultrasound everything will help okay once you earn their trust then is the treatment of the etiology for that you have to go in with machines and i i don't uh, talk about all the machines sir. although i do have all the machines uh, because i am a so called tmj specialist so uh, so i have to have all the machines sir. but otherwise i don't recommend you buy all the machines but i do recommend that you buy a ultra low frequency tens machine start working on that because it costs around 2.5 for 3 lakh rupees that is all that your investment is but start doing it and then you start seeing the results okay the ultrasound will help for you to get a good bite with the tens machine this is my take on that dr mamta please your question sir uh, so i am dr gorav uh Hi. sir what is the take on uh, the uh, lllt therapy when we give uh, giving to the patient what is the minimum wattage we should be consider because uh, uh, there are different uh, wattage for a uh, for different patients so what you recommend give that is the best wattage for a uh, indian community uh, i didn't get lllp sir uh, low level laser therapy sir that uh, you already mentioned sir ultrasound with lasers sir it's laser na sir uh, ah, yeah, yeah yeah okay okay that uh, my uh, laser specialist comes and uh, does the laser lacing of the tmj area and once that is done i take him up for uh, this thing i think i am not uh, uh, very well versed with the photodynamics of the lasers or uh, what uh, wavelength they use i can uh, verify with it and uh, if you could send me a mail or something i will uh, uh, reply to you thank you sir thank you thank you garo so we are done with this session thank you dr tatu giving sharing your experience i have to thank uh, the iamr and uh, dr shalu and my uh, co host for bearing with me all this time it's i know it's lunch and everybody is hungry uh, and uh, one more thing about covid 19 is i don't know if uh, happens to everyone or hungry every one hour Does that happened to all of you yeah it's true sir that's, true, sir. that's because of quarantine in home sir <laughs> quarantine <yeah. laughs> okay. so we must salute all the corona virus first yeah. all the corona warriors yeah, this is the day for salute to them so my uh, thanks to the iomr uh, dr shalurai in particular because uh, she called me up one day and said you should uh, give us the lecture i said wow nice <laughs> so um, i was assembling all whatever was available within my uh, you know reach and uh, i hope i have been able to drive in some few points and i would like to thank icmo india because i have been using their uh, app for the presentation that's why we could talk for almost an hour and a half uh, dr paulomi especially don't know if she's still there but she is the one who did the hosting uh, from the icmo side and uh, let's hope i have planted a seed of uh, you know uh, some keen interest into mj management and uh, i want all oral medicine people there it is the next big thing it is bigger than covid 19 every patient has a tmj problem it's just yeah, that true, we sir. don't find it okay yes, sir, now it's time sir. for us to find it okay thank you sir thank you sir thank you everybody thank, thank you sir, sir.